Back live with you tonight, and thanks uh, for staying on. The Northwest Develop De Development Corporation rather has uh, parted ways with controversial chief financial officer uh, who tendered an immediate uh, resignation during a media briefing yesterday in Pretoria. Home Affairs Minister Dr. Ramotswaledi announced that uh, Zimbabwean national Kudawash Mpofu fraudulently obtained his uh, South African residence permit. The minister says he has engaged the special investigating unit to probe the matter. Dr. Matsualedi joins us now for more on this particular matter. Uh, minister, good evening. Good to have you and thank you very much for coming on this evening. So, the CFO making... Uh, his way into such a, an important position at the Northwest Development Corporation. You know, if, if one to us to borrow the language of the, the Auditor General, one would say the accountability ecosystem in that particular department would either be poor or, or non-existent. What's the view of, of the Department of Home Affairs? Good evening, Tavo. Good evening, too the listeners and viewers. Uh, well, look, I, I, I'm not in a position to make such conclusions, but we believe the SIU will, because we have given the matter to SIU that apart from investigating both himself, they have to investigate the, 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 the behavior and attitude of officials in Home Affairs, as well as Northwest Economic Development Corporation. So maybe they'll tell us, were, were these just omissions or commissions? Because, Tabo, uh, you know, having, worked, having been in the public uh, service for a long time, I know that corruption can be either by commission or omission. Yes, we want to know whether this is just omission or commission. That's what the SIU is, is out to find out. So, I mean, we had lots of debates, for example, in, in previous times about what uh, uh, naturalization is and so on and so forth and, and uh, what, what, what is a residence permit and so on and so forth. So, in this particular case, what were the red flags that would have said this is a fraudulent residence permit? Well, if the people who hired him inquired with us to find out the, if this is genuine, it would have come out very clearly and very aid. Because these permits do have numbers, reference numbers and control numbers. Now, the reference number that he has got uh, does not exist in the, in the government system. Uh, remember, there are, there are series of numbers and numbers and numbers. But that one doesn't exist, which means he just chose a random, random, random number, perhaps believing that our numbers are random. But also there is a control number. These documents are presented by government printing works. And the, the, the control number is sort of a serial number in the government printing works. So when they, we investigated, we found that that number was actually allocated to somebody else who is not this gentleman, somebody else from another country, I think is a gentleman from India. So if his visa was printed in our machines, the machines will have picked it up because they don't allocate the same serial number twice. So the fact that uh, that serial number is there and the, 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 the control number is, I mean, the reference number does not even exist, shows that this document was printed outside the government system. We don't know where it was printed. So, I mean, in our last conversation, you said, unfortunately, the laws in the country don't just say, okay, you've got a fraudulent document, bring it here, we tear it apart, and, and that's it, we send you away. You say, uh, there are processes, we've got to call you and say, please uh, come and explain to us uh, what's happening here, what's, what's, what's wrong with this document. So, having made that call, uh, what did the doctor say? Or is it the doctor, sorry, Mr. Mpofu, I beg your pardon. The, the doctor? No, Mr. Mpofu, I beg your pardon. What did Mr. Mpofu say when you called him and said, and said look, we, we are finding some issues with your immigration documents? No, you see, Tabo, one of the things we want the SIU to investigate is exactly that. When some officials in Home Affairs found out that his document is, is fraudulent, they did the right thing. They did write to him and his lawyers, by the way and inform them that, no, we cannot even process your application for citizenship 
because he was feeling so emboldened that he thought now, now that I'm settled, I got my permanent residence, they said nothing. I got a job, they said nothing. I'm now moving for citizenship. So when he made that application for citizenship, when they investigated, they found that indeed this is fraudulent. They wrote him a letter and said, we cannot process your application for citizenship because your permanent residence document on which you are basing your application is actually fraudulent. But then they stopped there. And as I said yesterday in the press conference, they should have rushed to police to open a criminal case immediately and take steps to make sure that they take away those documents because even if they are fraudulent, he obtained them in our name and is using uh, them in the name of former affairs, whoever is using them. So we, we want that matter also to be investigated. And then he goes to Northwest, present this fraudulent document to get a job as a CFO, and nobody investigates. Usually, Tabo, when you apply for a job, part of the reason why the government is usually criticized for taking too long to hire people is because HR sections are forced all over. Minister, I think you're back now. So you, you, you're saying part of your concerns would have been the fact that the department did not open a case with the police immediately as soon as it came across their desk that this is fraud. Um, now, you want the SIU to, to investigate that. Why is it that your department is not investigating that itself? No, no, no. We have given everything to SIU to do it together because they can easily link them. We want to see whether our officials were just careless, negligent, or whether they were collaborators. And we think that the best institution to do that will be SIU because they are not investigating isolated things. They are linking what happened uh, with Mr. Mbofu in Northwest and in the department itself. In our department, is two areas. The areas where they deal with permitting and the, the area, the legal unit of the department. We want to see if there was any link. So we, we cannot do that on our own. Now, the uh, other question, of course, is the question of the non-responsiveness of the department, including the non-responsiveness, it seems, of you as the minister as well. Well, I'm angry, Tabo, because where did I not respond? I knew about this case for the first time when I saw it in the newspapers, that there was a case like this. So part of that investigation is, obviously, if you come across documents, legal documents, where somebody is, is taking us to court, you inform the DG and eventually the minister to see whether we leave it or we take a decision to oppose. If we take a decision to oppose, then it goes to the legal unit. They, they start working with the state attorney's office to appoint the senior counsel who will defend us in court, and then we start writing affidavits. All these things did not happen, and that's what Mbofu was posting about that nobody is responding to me. We want to know what, what is that clearing and responsiveness all about. And then Mbofu comes and rushes and says, yes, the minister, the minister. Uh, does he know something that together with these officials he might have been collaborating with? They made sure that the minister doesn't know anything about but they will drag his name in the mud. You see, there was no way I was not going to respond because I know that if you don't respond in court, you are usually just cause, you know. Is the process then of, of uh, performing due diligence only a requirement for, for departments uh, or government departments, or is it a, a requirement for, for all employers? Uh, is it their duty to, to, to verify uh, the references, the details of their prospective employees, particularly uh, those with, with residence permits or, 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 or similar? In fact, it's a legal Excuse me, Tabo. It's a legal requirement. I think it's Section 38 of the Immigration Act, number 2002. I think it's Section 8, if I'm not mistaken, where it says it is the onus of the lies on the employer to make sure that before they do they hire anybody, they do a background check and cross check with the department, especially if people come with this type of documents. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes. 
So the employers are required by law to check TABO. It's not only the state, even private employers have to do so. Let's, let's close with this because I'm sure it will dominate a, a, a lot of the news going forward and you might need to come back and, and respond to it. But we are seeing some unconfirmed reports of um, some commotion at Lindela that could have uh, led to some of those who were there uh, escaping. What, what does your department know about that so far? Yes, we, we, do, we have had, and as I'm speaking, the DG rushed there to find the facts out so we cannot mention anything until uh, he comes back and gives us the fact. But yes, there has been some form of commu commotion, and he is there. He has not yet phoned back to me to tell me what's going on. Minister, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much uh, for coming on uh, this evening. That's uh, Dr. Arun Motswa Lady there uh, on uh, the latest uh, from the Department uh, of Home Affairs. All right.